the Mass for the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are happy to have you here with us. As we gather today, let us consider our readiness for the Lord's coming at the end of time. Our Mass intention is for the deceased members of the Carter and Louise Peters family. Opening hymn is number 352 in the Missalette. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of God, the love of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather once again at God's table, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, <clears throat> and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking the thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence. And whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh my God. My soul is thirsting for you. O God, you are my God whom I seek, for your flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless, without water. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be. May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips, so that you may proclaim his gospel worthy and well. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Gospel according to Matthew. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was in uh, seminary, one of the exhibits that came through Milwaukee and <clears throat> around the world was the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. And of course, they had all kinds of different things from that time period. And our instructor was with us, and they had these little, uh, very small uh, lamps, oil lamps, about that big. And I, I guess they were kind of a personal size. So you can imagine... You know, if you didn't keep oil in that thing, it's not going to last for very long. And a couple of things with that, you live in a world without electricity, you're very careful with the oil. You have to make sure you have enough, and you have to keep making it. It didn't sell, well, they sold it in shops, I suppose, but somebody had to press the olives to make the oil, or some other plants to make oil that would burn in their lamps. So Jesus is talking, of course, his immediate audience is the people there with him both the Jewish people and his disciples. To the Jewish people, I guess the message would have been that they were the foolish ones. They knew what they needed, but they didn't have it. They knew what they needed to keep going, to be the light of the world, and they had let it go out. To his own people and to us, he says, keep your lamps trimmed and burning brightly. Now again, I don't know a lot about that type of lantern and that, but You've got to keep those wicks trimmed or they don't burn correctly or they burn in a very odd way. And so it's constant care, just constant care. And only enough, like I said, if you took that small uh, lamp and you carried it around, you'd have to bring some more with you somehow to be able to top it off from now, from time to time. That's how it is with us and the Holy Spirit. The oil, I think, represents for us the Holy Spirit. Our lamps need to be burning brightly until Jesus comes again. Jesus will remind us that even though many have said over the years they would give a specific date as to when Jesus was going to return, and every one of them has failed, every one of them has been wrong, because Jesus said that only the Father knows when that time will come. I guess I compare it to some of the young couples I'm preparing for marriage. Why now? It just feels right. In God's way of thinking, in God's way of looking at the world, there is a perfect time for everything. There was a perfect time for his son to come and be born among men. It was a perfect time that we don't know when he will return. We also know the flip side of that is our own uh, lifetime is very short. 70, 80 years sounds like a lot, but when you get a little older, it doesn't seem so much anymore. But we know that our lives have a limit, and they will end. We may die before Christ comes back. We may be with him when he comes. But either way, we need to be prepared. I, when I talked to the students about that, I said, when you get up in the morning, you got to have your book bags, you got to have your homework, your, and all these different things for the day. 
and we know to be prepared. We're smart people. We know that in a couple of months it's going to be snowy and icy. We make sure we have what we need. Snow shovels, ice melt, whatever. Why should it be any different in the spiritual life? We need to fill our lamps with the oil of the Holy Spirit and be prepared for the coming of Jesus. And so, again, some churches will do that in a form of trying to scare people. No, we're not trying to scare people. He, neither was Jesus. He just said, be ready, be prepared. Sadly, the people in Jesus' own time, I guess, really thought he would come in their lifetime. So why hasn't he come back again? In God's perfect time, according to his will. So bringing it all around, what do we do? How do we keep the oil in our lamps? We continue to receive the sacraments. Pray, read scripture, and receive the sacraments. This is the source and summit of our faith. And I'm glad that things are easing up. Well, I'd hate to say that, that things are easing up with the virus. But that we're getting more and more people to come back to church, at least to try to be here, and to receive the body and blood of Christ in all its fullness. That's how we fill ourselves up, and by receiving the sacrament of reconciliation. Now, I know with all that's going on, there's some concerns about that. I'm going to start once again as we ease into Advent to give you times that will be in the bulletins and we'll try to mention them as often as possible when I'll come over and just be in the confessional. Rather than having a penance service, we decided in the area we're going to try it that way and I will wear a mask and I ask you to wear a mask. But do receive the sacrament of reconciliation. We are called as Catholics to receive it at least once a year. But we need it more than that. I know that I do. So we fill our lamps with the grace and blessing of the Holy Spirit by prayer, scripture, sacraments. That's all it takes, and yet it takes that. We need to keep filled, or our lamps will go out. And should Christ come when our lamps have burned out, what then? Will we be like the virgins who said, help us, you know, Jesus said, some will come knocking on his door, and he will say, I never knew you. We are not like that. We are good Catholics. We are good people. We know to be prepared. May God give us the grace to examine our lives, as we always do, to examine our lives and see, are we prepared for the coming of Christ the King by the infilling of the grace of the Holy Spirit? Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, in the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The life, life of the, of the world, world to come. come. Amen. With faith, hope, and love, let us bring our needs to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Sean McKnight, all priests, deacons, and religious, that the Holy Spirit may inspire and strengthen them as they lead the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our local, state, and national elected leaders, that they may govern with integrity and work for the common good. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and suffering, especially those affected by the COVID virus, and for those who are working to keep our community safe and healthy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the holy priesthood in our diocese, that young men and women may hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and respond generously, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of today's Mass, for the deceased members of Carter and Louise Peters' family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, hear the prayers of your people gathered before you in faith and grant them according to your gracious will through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory song is in glory and praise, all that we have, number 10. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn is in the mislet number 321 here I am Lord By the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure and those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, next weekend I will not be here. Father Stephen Jones, the stewardship director for the diocese, will be here. He will be talking about stewardship but I would like very much for you to set aside any thoughts you have that the bishop or Father Jones or myself that we're asking about money. We want to give a new understanding to what stewardship is, the totality of what we do and who we are, not just our cash. We always get that message, we've heard that, but I really want you to just come and come and see, come and hear the message. He will have all the masses, the following Wednesday, and I don't, I don't want to quote a date because I always get it wrong, the following Wednesday at 7 p.m., we will have a, I call it a town hall meeting here with Father, to ask, ask and answer questions and concerns that you may have, and I ask you to support that as well. As we look to the future, our, our well, relatively new bishop has some ways and ideas and things that he'd like to see us move forward as we grow as the people of God and recognize, and this is the bottom of the main part of the message, everything we have is a gift from God, and everything we give back 
is our gift to God. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. The closing hymn is number 248 in the Mislet for the Beauty of the Earth. Thank you.